thank you to today's sponsor, Audible. When Audible approached us and asked if we wanted to work with them, the answer was immediately yes, of course. We've actually been using Audible since the inception of this podcast. The research couldn't be as deep if I wasn't able to actually listen to the book sometimes while I'm working on other things, or if I'm just trying to lay down and relax but still feel like I'm being productive. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to all the way to new releases, to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more. I think you get the picture. And as an Audible member, you'll get one free credit every month, good for any title in their entire premium collection. That means the latest bestsellers, the buzziest new releases, and the hottest celebrity memoirs for all you celebrity uh, gossip people out there. Or maybe just a book on that list you've been meaning to pick up forever. The Audible app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. You can listen across devices without losing your spot, and Audible members don't have to worry about using their credits right away. If you want to jump to Audible right now and get an account, visit audible.com slash chill or text chill to 500-500. Get yourself your free book and your account today. That's audible.com slash chill or text chill to 500-500. Man, we're fancy now, aren't we? Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Chiluminati Podcast, episode 99. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined with my two co-hosts, Alex Fasciani and Jesse Hi. Cox. Hello, boys. And I uh, am not. I am. I am. Oh, boy. 99 and episodes, we and we're, we're not going to make it to 100. Shit. We're not even going to make it to 100. This is going to be the last <laughs> this episode. This is where it ends, dude, because we bring on today a special guest. For those of you who don't really follow us in our other endeavors and in video games and stuff. Um, Crendor, would you mind uh, introducing yourself to those who sure may thing. not know who or what you are? Uh, what am I? I don't even know. That's a good um, question. <laughs> hey, it's me. I'm Crendor. You may know me from such things as the co-optional podcast from years ago, uh, derailing it. You may know me from such things as Cox and Crendor, a podcast I do with Jesse, where we're almost episode 300. I don't even know. Wow. God that damn. Far in. That's wild. How does yeah. it feel? It feels like it always has. Yeah. <laughs> you just get in a routine changed. and then it piles up and then you're yeah. 100 episodes in. It's fucking insane. Yeah, we started it in eight years ago, I think. Eight or nine. Yeah. So it's, man. Wow. Man. Eight, really? That's been going on for eight or nine years. That's awesome. It's crazy, but that's yeah. wild. As long as we realize we could just talk about anything and people would listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that was, wild. That was anyway. a crazy revelation we were just like what if we talk about anything okay and that's it we yeah, don't that even was plan it. There's the zero show. plan congratulations <laughs> this podcast has like researchers like a whole yeah we, we got a researcher we no, put work into nah, our episodes nah, nah. that. I don't think I've ever researched a Cox and Crendor episode <laughs> <laughs> so, so you research? can't be mad that I did not expect Crendor to come here with a topic then I'm oh, mad yeah. because I came with the expectation that today, on our 99th episode, we would have Crendor on, my co-host, for eight years, <laughs> and, and he was about to longer? tell us something crazy, like, I was in the woods, it was the summer of 2014. You thought and he was going to come I out saw. as like a, like a true yes. believer? I thought yeah, he was like, like, that's where I saw Squatch. <laughs> Squatch. Squatch kidnapped me and forced me to mate with her. We had four Squatch babies. I was ready for I mean, it. And I now I got to, nothing. I used to listen to Coast to Coast AM every night. Great show. Jane, just Love mainly show. for the, uh, just to hear the people. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like, you'd see the, the, people, the people calling. calling in all the time. Yeah, that was the George. guy. One guy was like, I tell you what, I got a gun on my bedside. And one night I dreamt I was attacked by aliens and I shot at the alien. I woke up and there was bullets missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the shit? Those are the ones you got to believe, man. Those are the ones you got to listen to. Yeah. That man <laughs> just probably shot at like a bird or something. And we, <laughs> we don't know. We've talked about this numerous times. I want to just say. Art Bell, still way better than George Nori. Still oh, way yeah. better. Still way better. <laughs> Whatever. You know, I'm just going to put that out who, there. Who the likes ether. George Nori more? Anyone? 
I, no. I'm just saying, like, Art Bell will be like, that's that's a lie. You aren't. That's not true. And George Norrie's like, interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. If some guy calls you, he's like, George, George, when I when it's not time outside, I see little green men. And you know what? I, I, I had like a six pack of beer. But like, I'm telling you, they're out there, George. And George is like, get the fuck Go out on. of here. Tell us. And Art would have been like. You drunk bitch, get out of here. <laughs> oh my Dude, there God. Was, uh, there was one time I was listening. He literally brought up Sasquatch. This guy called in. He's like, I was taken by them. I was taken by the Squatch. I was, I lived with them in their cave. I was naked. They fed me. They clothed me. And they erased my memory. And one day they just left me in the middle of the woods. They fed and clothed him? <laughs> what the they hell? Well, I've him. never heard of a Squatch taking that good a care of anybody. I yeah. love... That we have all just agreed. To call How does he know what happened? If, if, if they erased his memory, I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> the, the, like, little love notes left in his clothes. <laughs> I guess he remembers being taken by them and then like being dropped Stitched off. But love. then he just remembers that the they clogged. Yeah, the Sasquatches. They fucked up. They took their glowing rock and they only dialed it back so long. Yeah. They did it. They forgot. They have men in black technology, and we're never going to get it. We're never, no, we are never going to get it. <laughs> oh, no, all right, man. that's the kind of episode you're looking forward to today. There you go. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. Right. welcome, Here welcome, we welcome. So I took it into my, uh, I took, it took it into my hands and I decided to see if I could find something weird. And of course I wanted to start with something maybe local to where you live. Unfortunately, through researching Chicago, Chicago is relatively low on paranormal, but maximized on crime. Like there's just so many crime <laughs> stories out there. No, that's a I'm true looking story. Up, I'm, look, I'm trying to look up ghost stories and it's just telling me about cr- crimes that are happening in there's Chicago. There's no like right Capone now. ghost or this something like that? This is just like Fox News at this no. point. Then. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of things. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Uh, there's a couple things. I mean, Crandor sent me a couple things about Resurrection Mary and stuff, but even like looking at Resurrection them, Mary and we're not going to cover that. No, because it's not. There's not a lot there. There's what, really not. Time out, time out. What is Resurrection Mary? Real quick. Lady gets killed on a highway, hit by a car in the graveyard. She tends to show up and she burned the gates where she grabbed onto them at one point. That's pretty much the extent of the story. There's actually a picture of the gate where it's burned and uh, you can take a look, look at it. And that's 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 like the long and short of it. Okay. That's your ghost story. So Resurrection Mary. Yeah. I uh, I decided to go for something weirder, uh, something a little bit uh, interesting. So as I was looking, um, first, I want to say my my uh, what I discovered, what I wanted to do came from TikTok. So I feel like this is a, an Alex, kind of a weird Alex. Oh, episode. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shameless ooh. selling out. That's right, Shameless Alex. Selling out. Shouldn't oh, we be God. doing that? Jesse, Wink. Alex, Krendor threw me so off. I was going <laughs> to forget. <laughs> Told oh, no. you. Told you. No one ever forgets about this, because here's the thing. Do, you, speaking of forgetting, do you remember when Chiluminati didn't come out every single week? You know what I mean? It was a terrible time. It was a dark time when people didn't have the information that they needed each week to realize the truth about the world around them. But thank God, because finally we launched our Patreon. Thank God. And people were able to show up there and they were able to contribute. And now this completely factual podcast that we run here is now... Every week you get a nice new story. Every uh, you know, every month you get great new art, you get shirts, you get pre-sale on everything. It's great. And you get a Discord. Everything is everything is fantastic at patreon.com slash Illuminati pod. And it honestly, like bits aside, does like help us run our lives. You know, it's like, you know, it makes this a job for us rather than just something we do for fun. And, you know. You only benefit. You only stand to benefit, you know, and uh, if you love the show and you, you, you want to hear it every week without ads, that's a great reason to head over there. But also after every episode, you get 15 minutes of brand new, fresh Chiluminots every time. Little chill minis straight from our mouths to your mouths, because we are basically kissing you with our knowledge, with our microphones <laughs> through the Internet. And that's I how I want to sign it. up for a Chiluminati <laughs> Patreon anymore. <laughs> You can feel my hot kiss your brains with knowledge, dude. We're gonna flowing down your throat as I tell you about things that are questionably correct or not. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Alex. Appreciate taking us to that uh, Shaluminati uh, segment. Uh, so the, today's episode comes from TikTok. Initially, this is where the seed uh, was planted. I don't know about you boys, but I'm uh, on TikTok. I'm like part of like three subgroups. I'm on like conspiracy talk. I'm on millennial talk. 
and I'm on like ADHD. There's talk. subgroups on there. Yeah, man. Like as your as your algorithm kind of refines who you are, you start finding yourselves in very specific kind of subgenres oh, no. on TikTok. That says a lot about me. <laughs> most of most of my my algorithm is like when I scroll through and I don't know, like I don't follow anyone. So when I scroll through, it's like people discussing their divorce. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> girls, girls like flirting with the camera, and what? then people doing comedy stand-up routines of comedians but like the like them voicing it and i'm like why is this that's what i get oh and food videos but food videos where people talk about divorcing their husband people are just pouring nacho cheese on the fucking counter yeah like (laughs) i don't know what i watch yeah so i i think because i keep scrolling through it it just makes the algorithm like more firm where it's like, that's what he likes. He loves it. He I watches didn't know it. You could, I didn't even know you could search Here's for things thing. until Do yesterday. you like it? <laughs> um, I don't. I, here, I, I will say I'm not a fan of the divorce stories because they. this is how they work every time. And any TikTok user will, will know this. It's like, so the day I caught my husband cheating on me and we're getting a divorce. <laughs> Follow me for video two. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for a while I was stuck on like dead spouse TikTok, where it was like he like it shows a picture with sad music and then it hard cuts to like them at their gravesite on their knee crying. Very oh, weird. Shit. I found myself there for I, a while. Uh, I had to get I out. discovered that there's a racket, like there's a genuine scam part of TikTok. Ooh. So uh, a great uh, there was one where it was a, a, a dad and he had like a sign and he was at an airport and his daughter was behind him freaking out. And the sign as he's like going through like the crappy music they're playing in the background and revealing parts of the sign. The sign basically says that the dad is there with his daughter and this guy that she loves is coming to meet meet her. But she has an opportunity to go overseas and it, she'll follow her career. And so if this guy loves her, he'll let her go overseas and, and break up with her. Right. Because it's the right uh-huh. thing to do for his daughter. And I was like, I got to see where this video goes. So I click on the page yeah. and the page is a company kind of like maker studios, kind of uh, and, already and it, a scam. And, and all of oh, it yeah. is videos with the same actors doing like uh, one is a sign. He's like, I found out that my wife cheated with the five men behind me and he's revealing it. Oh, I've seen and, those. And, but like, it was they're fake. Same actors, all the same actors in every single <laughs> oh, version. I knew they were fake as shit right away. I was like, <laughs> this is, but I, I didn't think it was so blatant. Like, it's like prank videos. It's like, what are we yeah. doing here? That's it, wild. It's obviously so fake, but like, I couldn't believe it was so lazy that I just scrolled one thing over and I was like, oh, this is, they're all the same people. Well, I don't yeah, think like you understand. Most people probably never leave their for you page and never go to investigate. So they just assume it's real and move on. And those are on one, like Facebook and stuff, too. So like they're oh, all yeah. over. Literally one actor was in three different ones. And over the course of those three, he was the dad of a girl who's he and his best friend were going to convince was pregnant. That he like got his best friends, his daughter's best friend pregnant. That was the goof. Uh, and then he also was. The guy who was cheated on by uh, by his wife with four other dudes. And he was also the son of an old man who was dying. This guy was all wow. three. <laughs> and I was what just a like the big three. This guy's <laughs> a crazy life, dude. Yeah. Say that. <laughs> ah. Couldn't believe well, it. I was wild. blown away. Well, conspiracy TikTok, if you can find yourself there, is filled with videos that have like a hundred likes and a person like who has like a light bulb working in their room. So it's really hard to see what they're saying. And they're spouting off about how they met their aliens in their lucid dreams and are the guiding light to whatever. This is my bread and butter. Like that puts you, (laughs) puts you there. You got people who like stop scrolling. This one's for you. And they like throw the bones and start reading the bones. Yeah. But if you got to get through that crap, like now I'm convinced that's fake. We just talked about how all these other things are fake. Why is this real? (laughs) That's (laughs) true. Nothing is real. But mixed in that is people who will like take news clippings of like, I bet you didn't know about this. And one of those sent me kind of a down a rabbit hole. What if I told you everything about our the the United States history from its discovery even before is all a lie and everything we were taught in high school was truly a lie. And even the Smithsonian is so deep in trying to hide the true history here of the United States that they burned and destroyed evidence to keep it silent. I mean, this I kind of believe the- it, honestly. 
<laughs> what? No, no. I can't Alex, be like, this is the dumbest I, thing I've ever heard. And Crandor be like, I believe that. Can we take no. Jesse right now and just have Crandor be the new third host? I already like where he's at, man. Just, I mean, here's the thing. This. It's like uh, history's always like a little wishy-washy, right? Like look at uh, the, what do they call them? Like the Catholic church, like burning books and shit. They're it's like, true. oh, we, we don't, don't want know. these on the Bible. Then you're just like, no, nah, they wouldn't do that. They, they wouldn't, nah. Like well, any of you would have read those books anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, but who knows? Maybe they had some cool shit in it. Maybe it was like a gladiator no, it was fight. Like, and he's like, God, uh, he's save me. And he became like universe. a giant. He beat up someone. I don't know. There's nothing. There was nothing in there about oh. a giant. There were no giants. There's, 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 no giant. there's a really famous giant. <laughs> no, no, no. That was just uh, that was, Goliath was like six two. We are gonna do an episode on on giants and if they're possibly actually still around today, one day because it's possible. They're not anyway. So <laughs> that might be answer. Before, they're not. But as I was even getting into that topic, I just need to mention something that I came across from a, an article in 1934. Did you know that there's a map of the secret lizard city under L.A.? And in 1934, it was described by a man named G. Warren Schufelt to the L.A. Times. And he said he discovered the, the remnants of an ancient reptilian civilization under L.A. Where did you now? Which Q website did you go to find? This information? <laughs> is that the same? Is that the same G from House of the Dead? <laughs> yeah well he suffered and you will suffer like g did yeah yeah this one i'm not buying as much is no, there a picture <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a picture uh let me let me link all of you Shut in up, zoom no, here man. i want the map a picture little, uh, yeah all right yeah we, we should go, go explore alex <laughs> there you go right there right there it's uh on gizmodo yeah oh my god uh, the, Ancient li uh, lizard city under LA. I love the word. I love that in like certain parts of the map, there's just like the word gold with arrows pointing in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> this is gold everywhere, man. <laughs> so this I found interesting. I just wanted you to know, Jesse, that in the city you live, you have reptilians living underneath you. So just be ready. They're, you'll be the first city I'm to go. I'm going to let you know uh, there would have been something found. How did the but lizards not if, eat? Not if the government doesn't want you to know. How the did the lizards eat, though? Great. Well, if you well, I mean, if they're reptilians, they have a contract with the government and they're able to abduct X number the of people. The government of year. L.A. No, no come this, on. Yeah, this, would have been, this would have been announced. If this was discovered in 1934, they probably made some sort of contract nah, with, them, nah, with nah, the. They would be if this was discovered in 1934 <laughs> and was real. What they'd be the, like, come to L.A. for the lizard people. No, there's a quote. There's a quote about the food. Look, it says there's domes. There's rooms in the domes of the hills above the city with labyrinths that have thousands of families in the manner of tall buildings and imperishable food supplies of the herb variety. So they're oh, vegetarians. There go. So vegetarian reptilians, they truly are LA reptilians. And apparently they dug the tunnels after the great catastrophe 5,000 years ago using chemicals instead of shovels. Of course. So this is true. This is obviously true. Yeah, this is obviously <laughs> true. This makes sense. <laughs> well, what's well, the, that's not our what's topic the great today? catastrophe? What happened? 5,000 years ago, it was probably some great alien war that that ended up wiping out most living things on Earth. And also, what do the lizard people even like want? Nothing. Right? I mean, like, that's a great want? question. That's a great question. Maybe they question. just want to be know. part of the whole, you know, maybe they just want to join, uh, you know, part like, of this world. Yeah. Yeah. Take like over our mermaid. society, obviously run the government. Right. I think that's, you know, maybe yeah, or is that the Gray's intention. That? Or is that the Gray's intent? What do they get no, from that's that? True. It's reptilians are the ones that are supposed to be in our, in our government. They get the satisfaction of knowing they pulled one over on us. <laughs> of a job well done. All right, maybe yeah, Crandor, you can't. You're asking too many questions, Crandor. This is not I'm all about questions. This is not, this is not gonna work out. Um so uh, but our real topic today actually it, it concerns ourselves with the quote unquote discovery. Of America. Obviously, there are people living here in this world, and this land wasn't truly discovered by anybody, Christopher Columbus or otherwise. But what if I told you Christopher Columbus wasn't the first traveler? Vikings weren't the first traveler. What if I told you there was evidence of an Egyptian colony found in the center of the United States in the Grand Canyon that showed that we had Egyptian settlers crossing over the United States and making their home somewhere, whether they were lost or whether on purpose? And they ended up uh, with they, they ended up creating <laughs> Jesse is starting to slowly unravel and they ended up creating their own uh, small little colony deep down into the Grand Canyon. Time out. There was Time out. Evidence all right. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Was whoa. Jesus with them? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Let's pretend like 
Is this your main story? I don't want to destroy yes. your main story yeah, this immediately. Is this, is our, this is our main this story. This is your my main. This, this is, is what you came with. This is what I came today. This is what I came with. Mathis, take the time right now to go find something better. <laughs> and a big thank you to another of today's sponsors, HelloFresh, my favorite meal provider kit. HelloFresh has been with us for a while now, and there's a good reason for it. I love their friggin' food and their meals are so easy and so fun to put together, especially now that I'm all grown up and live in my own house. And it's never gonna be the same thing. HelloFresh offers 25 plus recipes to choose from every week, from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. HelloFresh is also a great, great value. It's 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing any of the quality. I've been using HelloFresh now for months and I have weekly meals that are now dedicated to HelloFresh nights. If you want to get your HelloFresh started, go to hellofresh.com 12 chill and use code 12 chill for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 12CHILL and use code 12CHILL for 12 free meals. Jump in now and start getting America's number one meal kit. No. <laughs> all right. All right. Time out. Time out. Let's just start from the beginning. All right. My name is Pharaoh Jesse. You are my brave warriors. <laughs> we, and I guess, you know, Alex can be the priest. Each we, night you have dreams of a land far from here that yes. you must. I had all these dreams of this magic land. Now, in my capacity as Pharaoh, mm -hmm. I know that we can travel up and down the Nile River. I know that there is a peoples to the north of us. I know that to the south of us are peoples as well. I also know that there's great bodies of water surrounding us. Now, if I construct a fleet to reach this place I've dreamed of, because I have no other reason to go there, right? Because as I look to my uh, west, there's a massive desert, which I'm not crossing. And if I look to my east, there are all of the other nations of the world, the Babylons and such that I don't want to mess with. So I've decided I'm going to sail down a little strip of water. And now here's the question. I, I turn to my priest and to my warriors. Yeah. Gentlemen, we must yes. make way for this land with which I have dreamed. Do we go left or right? Because either way, we are almost on the opposite side of the damn world. What and if, I just okay. want to know where'd they go? Where'd have they you travel know what kind from? of technologies they had back then? Have You're you telling seen? Me they flew? Have you <laughs> seen the <laughs> documentary uh, called Stargate? <laughs> uh, not only have I seen it, I've watched several seasons of the follow-up series. <laughs> How do they go from James Spader to that to that guy though? You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> they, they got to do what they got to do. All I'm saying you is maybe saying to yourself, there's no evidence of this. Well, what I'm, uh, no, not even sense. that. I'm just let's say it's all real. I'm just saying, <laughs> let's say if this you know is what? real. Let's say it's all real. That, that let's say good. it's all real. Right. So we have we have now left Egypt via the Nile, which is the way we get through and do everything, which first off, I don't even know how that works. Then <laughs> then we find ourselves, I don't know. In the Mediterranean, question mark? Or we, I, I don't know what we're doing. So now we're going to head across the Atlantic, which I assume is the right way. We have to go across the Atlantic. Um, I would go me, across the Pacific. It's they went they went across the Pacific. Here's the, all right. So what you're telling me is they went. I, I have an answer. Like, like, <laughs> all right. You're telling me that instead of going across the much shorter Atlantic Ocean, they don't know. They decided to go. They decided to go down Pat, the Egyptians. Past they India, didn't, they probably didn't do it on purpose. Past they probably got India, lost or something. Past India, past all of Asia, in like, which at the time there were like the Chinese weren't just like sitting around. So past all of that, then through the massive Pacific Ocean, yeah, <laughs> and then landed in California and said, you know what? 
not desert enough. Let's keep going inland. <laughs> and so they were like, all right, let's keep going. Oh, no, we found we found several deserts. No, 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 no. We need to go even further in to this canyon. Well, and we're so going to hide out fair, in the canyon. The Grand canyon. Hang on. Before you continue, the Grand Canyon is actually lots of places are kind of cornered off because there's a lot of like old places where ancient peoples lived down in the Grand Canyon. Oh, no, so. I was going to get to that. OK. And at the same time, displace the native cultures that have existed on this continent for quite some time at that point. And they're just going to like do all that. There's a small and group of them. In the, grand can- the grand canyon is where they up. chose. That's where they ended Not up. on the coast where a colony would be <laughs> perfect. They, okay, at. Look, if you hit like Tijuana area and you go through like Mexicali area, <laughs> right? They Past- march their asses that far inland. It's These not people- that far. That subsists that off <laughs> these people. That's lifeblood is the Nile River water. They know is the lifeblood it's just of a existence. Of like, let's leave that shit behind. It's just a this couple is, hundred they, miles. They, by the way, t- I mean, they also tracing back to they was somewhere around the Ramses era. The Ramses era. No, it's just <laughs> the golden happen. age. The greatest the time. Gold- <sighs> Do not I mean, even I don't really believe this math. I'm not going to lie. Remember, remember, when, remember when Crendor was saying about book burnings? <laughs> exactly. Have you ever exactly. heard of the Library of Alexandria? Maybe that whole right. shit there is in go. there. Maybe maybe they had fucking oh, hover. Shit. Maybe they had a fucking hover technology. We don't know. <laughs> they, they, I, I've <laughs> always you? said if you're gonna have hover technology, write it down on a like piece of parchment. <laughs> have you right? seen the helicopter hieroglyphics? Have you seen the batteries? <laughs> That they have in their tombs. <laughs> the, batteries did ex- the batteries did exist. See, but those those are rudimentary, and they aren't like press a button to accelerate to hyperspace level uh, nine. That's like, that's not. It's probably because it was operated by their minds. You got to think big. <laughs> you got to think big. That's, that's why, why I'm the priest. Were so big because they were aliens, obviously hiding their cone head. That's how I of got course. to be the high priest. <laughs> right, Indiana Jones, Temple of the Crystal Skull. I've seen it. We've all seen it. Now, granted, the evidence for this is. A single newspaper article from 1909, the year it was supposedly <laughs> discovered in the Arizona Gazette uh, on April 5th. Question. I'm going to read this guy the later go on all. to find lizard people underneath LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let me read the, the article for you. And I then can't we'll believe this on. is the story right. you have. I'm so this, upset with you right now. <laughs> I can't believe this is what this podcast Listen, man, is. I knew it was going to. I had I'm to find so something mad. suitably I'm so like, mad. weird and kind of dumb <laughs> just no, for this I, episode. I want to know more. I do too, right? Well, I'll be, I'll be honest. It hooked me when I had that, that TikTok show up in like 10 seconds. They were like, I was, like, I was what? joking never about this, this being before. our last episode, but uh, we are on track. We are, we are yeah. like, we've, we've solved all the mysteries. Now we're like <laughs> Egyptians in the Grand Canyon. Why not? Here's the thing. After this story, I can bring up, uh, I can bring up a conspiracy that you can, uh, you can talk about a bit. I want to. I want to hear your opinions on it. <laughs> All right. Well, great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me read this episode. This, uh, this I'm really worried. I'm so worried. 1909 <laughs> in April. The latest news of the progress of the explorations of what is now regarded by scientists as not only the oldest archaeological discovery in the United States, but one of the most valuable in the world, which was mentioned some time ago in the Gazette, was brought to the city yesterday by G. E. Kincaid, the explorer who G. found the Great Kincaid? Underground. That dude is selling snake oil. That man is 100%. He has like a traveling cart. And he's I like, think a little right girl G. saw G. him and then <laughs> went in a tornado and thought of him as the Wizard of Oz. G.E. <laughs> Kincaid? That, that, is, that is the most 1900s <laughs> I'm, I'm name I've ever heard. I'm trying to sell you on this shit, dude. G.E. <laughs> G. Kincaid. Before, Step right G. up, ladies and gentlemen. He was an explorer. He was an explorer in Monorail. 1909. Monorail. Monorail. <laughs> just, 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 but t- to G.E. Kincaid's credit, the guy, the like crazy old rich man of Los Angeles, his actual name is Griffith Jenkins Griffith. Okay. <laughs> Just so the guy from the observatory, his first and his last name are Griffith. Just so you know. The man's name was Griffith Griffith. Griffith J. Griffith. Like a Looney Tune. <laughs> I, know. Uh, I don't know if I'm too stoned for this shit. <laughs> I gotta say, Los Dude, Angeles I watched is the a great monorail city. episode of The Simpsons like two weeks ago. Yeah. Monorail. Monorail. G. Oh, is so good. G. 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 <laughs> sells monorails for sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it was brought to the city yesterday by G.E. Kincaid, 
the explorer who found the great underground citadel of the Grand Canyon during a trip to, from Green River, Wyoming, down, down the Colorado in a wooden boat to Yuma several months ago. According to the story related to the Gazette by Mr. Kincaid himself, the archaeologists of the Smithsonian Institute, which is financing the expeditions, have made discoveries that almost conclusively prove that the race which inhabited this mysterious cavern, hewn in solid rock by human hands, was of oriental origin, possibly from Egypt tracing back to Ramses. Hmm. If their theories are borne out by the translation of the tablets engraved with hieroglyphics, the mystery of the prehistoric peoples of North America, their ancient arts, who they were and whence they came will be solved. Egypt in the Nile and Arizona in the Colorado will be linked by a historical chain running back to the ages, which staggers the wildest fan uh, fancy of the fictionist. So I guess they're saying that, that the Nile was connected in that, in that regard. They also right. said oh, Egypt is in the Orient, which is a, <laughs> that's a stretch. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm reading the newspaper article. Yeah. I need, I need you to, if you'd be so kind. Go back to that last sentence and read it like a 1920s newsman. <laughs> okay, I'll do my, yeah, yeah, this last one. <clears throat> Egypt and the Nile and Arizona and the Colorado will be linked by a historical chain running back to ages which staggers the wildest fancy of the fictionist. There you go. That's the, like, of the fiction. Like, the fictionist <laughs> is another crazy word. like the completionist that, arch enemy. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm weird, Gerard. Yeah, I'm is out there. It's great. Dude. It's not even. It's not even a game, dude. You gotta know good. I played Mario Eight. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, my dad's it got an advanced copy of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's my uncle works fiction. at Nintendo. Lives in Japan. Be real. <laughs> now let's continue this article here. A thorough examination under the direction of Professor S. A. Jordan. The Smithsonian Institute is now prosecuting the most thorough explorations, which will be continued until the last link in the chain is forged. Nearly a mile underground, about 1,480 feet below the surface, the long main passage has been delved into to find another mammoth chamber which radiates scores of passageways like the spokes of a wheel. Several hundred rooms have been discovered, reached by passageways running from the main passage, one of them having, uh, having been explored for 854 feet and another for 634 feet. The recent finds include articles that have uh, never been known as native to this country, and doubtless that they had their origin in the Orient. War weapons, copper instruments, sharp edged and hard as steel indicate the high state of civilization reached by these strange people. So interested, so interested have the scientists become that preparations are being made to equip the camp for extensive studies, and the force will be uh, increased to 30 or 40 persons. Mr. Kincaid was the first white child born in Idaho and has been an explorer and hunter all his life. 30 years having been in the service of the Smithsonian Institute, even briefly recounted his history sounds fabulous, almost grotesque. So basically, supposedly, Mr. Kincaid was an explorer for the Smithsonian. He went out for the Smithsonian and looked at places. Excellent. The first so, uh, white child born in Idaho? <laughs> Supposedly, uh, what kind of stuff is that? <laughs> oh, no. That's why I want to read this whole article. We're almost we're, we're more than halfway. All right, I'll, wait. I'll wait. I'll yeah, wait. Yeah. I'll wait before we'll I destroy the this for you. The article here. Um, this is a quote. First, I would impress that the cavern is nearly inaccessible. The entrance is one thousand four hundred eighty-six feet down the sheer canyon wall. It is located on government land, and no visitor will be allowed there under penalty of trespass. The scientists wish to work unmolested without fear of archaeological discoveries being disturbed by curio or relic hunters. A trip there would be fruitless and the visitor would be sent on his way. The story of how I found the cavern has been related, but in a paragraph, I was journeying down the Colorado River in a boat alone looking for mineral. And mineral in this term, they mean gold, because the gold rush was basically in full effect at this point. Some 42 miles up the river from the El to Tovar Crystal Canyon, I saw on the east wall stains in the sedimentary formation about 2,000 feet above the riverbed. There was no trail to this point, but I finally reached it with great difficulty. Above a shelf that hid it from view from the river was the mouth of the cave. There are steps leading from this entrance some 30 yards to what was, at the time, the cavern was inhabited, the level of the river. Sorry, I, I said that weird. Uh, entrance from 30 yards from what was, at the time of the cavern was inhabited, the level of the river. When I saw the, the chisel marks on the wall inside the entrance, I became interested, securing my gun, and went in. During that trip, I went back several hundred feet along the main passage till I came to the crypt in which I discovered the mummies. One of these I stood up and photographed by flashlight. I gathered a number of relics which I carried down the Colorado to Yuma, from whence I shipped them to Washington with details of the discovery. 
Following this, the explorations were undertaken. <clears throat> Take a break there for a minute. If you're wondering where there's the picture, it doesn't exist. We don't have a picture. Supposedly, he took one. Supposedly, Mr. Kincaid was a professional photographer by trade on top of being an explorer, but we do not have this picture that he supposedly took on that, on that journey. I was going to ask what his credentials were besides being the first white child born in Idaho. <laughs> in 1909, that's all you needed, man. That is that wild it. to me. Every person born is a child also. Just throwing yes, that out there. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a conspiracy crazy. theory we need to break down. Uh, he goes on far, far, furthering, uh, following rather, breaking down what the passageways look like. The main passageway is about 12 feet wide, narrowing to nine feet toward the farther end. About 57 feet from the entrance, the first side passages branch off to the right and left, along which on both sides are a number of rooms about the size of ordinary living rooms of today though some are 30 by 40 uh, feet square. These are, entered by, these are entered by oval-shaped doors and are ventilated by round air spaces through the walls into the passages. The walls are about three, six, three feet six inches in thickness. The passages are chiseled or hewn as straight as could, uh, as could be laid out by an engineer. The ceilings of many of the rooms converge to a center. The side passages near the entrance run at a sharp angle, from the main hall, but toward the rear, they gradually reach a right angle in direction. Then there's the shrine. Over a hundred feet from the entrance is the cross hall, several hundred feet long in which are found the idol or image of the people's God, sitting cross-legged with a lotus flower or lily in each hand. The cast of the face is oriental in the carving uh, of, of this cavern. The idol almost resembles Buddha, though the scientists are not certain as to what religious worship it represents. Taking into consideration everything found thus far, it is possible that this worship must, uh, most resembles the ancient people of Tibet. Surrounding this idol are smaller images, some very beautiful in form, others crooked-necked and distorted shapes, sim a symb symbol symbolical, good lord, that word's hard to get on the first go, symbolical probably of good and evil. There are two large cactus with protruding arms, one on each side of the dyes on which the, uh, on which the god squats. All of this is carved of hard rock resembling marble. In the opposite corner of this cross hall were found tools of all descriptions made of copper. These people undoubtedly knew the lost art of hardening this metal, which has been sought by chemicals for centuries without result. On a bench running around the workroom was some charcoal and other material probably used in the process. There is also slag and, and stuff similar to mat showing that these ancients smelted ores. But so far, no trace of where or how this was was done has been discovered, nor the origin of the ore. <clears throat> Among the other finds are vases and urns uh, and cups of copper and gold, made very artistic in design. The pottery wor work includes enameled ware and gla glazed vessels. Another passageway leads to granaries such as are found in the Oriental temples. They contain seeds of various kinds. One very large storehouse has not yet been entered as it is 12 feet high and can be reached only from above. Two copper hooks extend on the edge, which indicates that some sort of ladder was attached. These granaries are rounded as the materials of which they are constructed, I think is a very hard cement. A gray metal is also found in the cavern, which puzzles the scientists for its identity has not been established. It resembles platinum strewn promiscuously over the floor everywhere are what people call cat's eyes, a yellow stone of no great value. Each one is engraved with the head of the Malay type. So that's what the they found what type? in the rooms. The Malay. M-A-L-A-Y. Like a Malaysian person. I imagine that's what they mean, yeah. It's, pro it's probably something super racist, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 1909, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. probably. Is, so we're saying, they're saying it looks Asian. It looks Tibetan. The, the Buddha looks like, yeah, to, like from that kind but of there's uh, also, area. Are we done with this? Yeah, but there's also <laughs> mummies. We gotta talk about the hieroglyphics and the crypt still. Okay. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad Jesse. So intermission. We got an intermission. Go intermission. Intermission. This I is a Jesse look, intermission. If I say what I'm going to say, it's you're not going to want to continue. <laughs> Just say. It. Just I'm say about it. to ruin this for everyone. Just Has somebody it. gone here? All right. Let me just, for the record, <laughs> we'll get to that. Ruin this for everyone. We're going to get to that. The literal Smithsonian. No, no, I know, I know, no, no, I know, we're gonna get there. I know what you're gonna say. I, I, oh, I told you. I, I already know. All we're gonna right. get there, okay, brother. We're gonna I'll get wait. There. I'll wait. I'll wait. You don't think I'm gonna cover poison people's minds? 
<laughs> you don't think I'm going to cover what the Smithsonian has said and all their lies that they've given to the public to the hide Smithsonian's the truth from their ears? lying. Why would they ever lie about this? What are you talking about? Okay. Smith- the only the only <laughs> thing I'm confused about right now, other than how I didn't hear about this amazing story before. Right, that's how I felt. Is is because it's that, not true. It why is, is not it, real. Why are they saying it's Egyptian when it's because it's, it's an idiot right now. It's an idiot huckster <laughs> who only I like can't stress this enough. This is bullshit. This is super bullshit. Like next level bullshit. And I want everyone to know. <laughs> that I never heard this either. And it took one Google search to be like, oh, no, this is bullshit. I'm just saying wherever you found this, the person who wrote the like, guys, guess what? That person's dumb as shit. That person's an idiot. They got this person's like, you know what else? I heard that actually the last American president was Grant. So technically America, it's that kind of level of it's idiocy. Idiocy. This is a newspaper, dude. People what America read this. incorporated and became a core. That's not even the same word. It's not even <laughs> the same usage of the word, you dummies. Oh my God, I can't deal Jesse with idiots. The, <laughs> Jesse watched the <laughs> HBO <laughs> QAnon documentary and he's, he's losing his mind. I'm so I'm just so mad at all of that. I'm so I don't like that we're in the same space. I'm not fine with us being the. We are like if we went to the same convention, they would be there too. I'd have to deal with that shit. And t- trust me, I already it would get the. Well. E- I already get the emails. Just so you know. <laughs> oh my God, dude. We've been getting them for a couple of yeah, years I now. I love ghosts. Stop talking about the weird emails that I get from people. <laughs> no, the, that, that was not a side of aspect of this job. I was actually I got too scared. This. Yeah, I got too scared to like call them out on the air after a while. <laughs> Let me just say for the record, ain't nobody sending me emails. <laughs> of course they're not sending you emails. No, I get, I get you like the key lime pie the guy. Galaxy. <laughs> The key lime pie uh, guy. Yeah. Oh, no, man. that's a whole other situation. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep going, man. There's more to the story, man. I'm waiting with bated breath. I'm waiting with bated breath. Patreon.com slash Illuminati Positive. This doesn't want you to know that the true history of this The of this Smithsonian country. would love us to know. If the Smithsonian no, no, discovered no. Egyptians, why would they? controlled by the shadow they? government, bro. Why they're controlled they? by the shadow Are you, government. Why would the shadow purging. government hide that? Why? For what reason? Because they, 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 to control us, man. Feed us, control feed us, us the information they want to know. How would this affect us? Because it would blow our minds. It would change everything we no, know about what, what happened it would in America. Not, the, the, the migration of humans from one continent to another would blow our mind? Dude, it it's, would, I don't. That's the history I, of the world. You would you, see. You're asking the right questions, Jesse. <laughs> you just got to ask the government why they're hiding it, and maybe we'll find no out. One's, no one would hide that. No one would hide people, that. There are significant <laughs> groups of people on this earth who do in fact believe that there are different archaeological histories, especially to American and South American and middle American history, where people from unexpected civilizations made their way to our country and some stuff happened with them a little later in time than we expected. So as far as, as far as this is concerned, you know, maybe there is, maybe there is something to this. all the way to, to the Grand Canyon, brother. I'm not saying I believe this, but you know, maybe they did. Maybe this guy did find something. Let me, no, no, let me be very clear. Alex, you are correct. There is some historical research being done that proves that, you know, we for a long time assumed that Christopher Columbus was the first. And then it was like, no, dude, Vikings are here first. And then, you know, I mean, let's be real. Natives were here first, but like, you know, of explorers, (laughs) there were other there were other people that, you know, there's talk of China. There's talk of all sorts of whatever the case may be. That's fine. I'm saying this specific story is bullshit. (laughs) 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 This specific story doesn't actually link to Egypt in some way. Yeah, we're gonna uh, keep. Okay. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. If you're gonna tell me that like some guy at the Egyptian school of archaeology somewhere is like, it was true. I'm gonna it's be like, guy, oh, yeah, no. it's Odette Fair from the Mummy trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> so next are the hieroglyphics. The rest found. of the magi show up. Yeah, <laughs> like O'Connell, they found we need you. Secret <laughs> that, oh my God! If that was oh, the, the Mummy pen. Four. I would love oh, that man. for a mummy movie. Oh my god. They were just in Colorado. Oh, god. Yeah. <laughs> this is I mean, this is gonna be the next national treasure treasure plot for Nicolas Cage, you know, for his next big movie. He could find this place. They're actually good movies, by the way. I love National Treasure One. Yeah. It's never so good. It. Why did I I should watch it's it? It's like Pirates of the Caribbean. Color. You gotta check it out. It's good stuff. 
Why did I say color Arizona is where the Grand Canyon is? I don't well, know why. Well, Colorado, Colorado would be even River. more. Well, they went through the Colorado River. All right, yes. that's, I was like, fine. why would I? Uh, yeah. For everyone tell out there who's okay, never so seen a mummy movie, go watch I'm the like, mummy. I'm, I'm going to convince you, Jesse. There's still more tell to go. Me more tell me more. more. Like, There's a she have a friend. Away. I'm going to I know the, the old history teacher in you is freaking out, but it's only because he hasn't learned new knowledge in so long. Mm. Indoctrinated by yeah. higher education <laughs> in right. this country. Mm. Yeah, college just lies to you. Okay. On all the urns or walls over doorways and tablets of stone which were found by the image are the mysterious hieroglyphics, the key to which the Smithsonian Institute hopes yet to discover. The engraving on the tablet probably probably has something to do with the religion of the people. Similar hier hieroglyphics have been found in southern Arizona. Among the pictorial writings, only two animals are found. One is a prehistoric type. If you're asking what animals he's talking about, he never like says. Like a dinosaur? <clears throat> It was a dinosaur. It was a prehistoric dino, tiger. brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Thank you to today's sponsor, Hawthorne. Rituals get results. You wouldn't skip leg day, would you, if you were one of those working out types? If I was a workout type, I probably wouldn't. It's probably bad to do that. I don't skip reading Alien Book Day when it's time to start reading books about aliens. It's the same idea. And if you want better skin, hair, and overall health, Rituals will help you do that. That's why Hawthorne has made it easy to build and maintain a personal care ritual that helps you look, smell, and feel your best. Hawthorne is a premium grooming brand that tailors your personal care routine to your unique profile. First, you head to their website and you take their quiz, which is kind of fun. It asks questions about your personal care routine, the types of products you like to use, and by the end, it recommends a couple of bundles that might be good for your personal ritual. At the end, I got an essentials bundle with all the products that tailor to my body type and lifestyle. I particularly went for the dry skin care routine as I moved across the country and my skin is very sensitive to this new dry heat. Take the Hawthorne quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and use promo code CHILL to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O. Promo code CHILL. Hawthorne.co. Promo code CHILL. The tomb or crypt in which the mummies were found is one of the largest of the chambers, the walls slanting back at an angle of about 35 degrees. On these are tiers of mummies, each one occupying a separate hewn shelf. At the head of each is a small bench on which is found copper cups and pieces of broken swords. Some of the mummies are covered with clay and all are wrapped in a bark fabric. The urns or cups on the lower tiers are crudes, while as the higher shelves are reached, the urns are finer in design showing a later stage of civilization. So they've been there for a while. See, they've been there for many years. It is worthy of note that all the mummies examined so far have proved to be male, no children or females being buried here. This leads to the belief that this exterior section was the warrior's barracks. Among the discoveries, no bones of animals have been found. No skins, no clothing, no bedding. Many of the rooms are bare, but for water vessels. One room, about 40 by 700 feet, was probably the main dining hall for cooking utensils are, are found here. What these people lived on is a problem, though it is presumed that they came south in the winter and farmed in the valleys, going back north in the summer. Vegetarians, just like the lizard people. Damn right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good connection. I didn't even see that. Dude, Upwards, it's close okay, enough. They could have just went underground into L.A. Yeah, they were super. That's, oh, my God. Drive. There's the, that's yeah. it. They went, they, there's the, the tunnels in the Grand Canyon led them to L.A. Five or six hours by car. No problem. You don't know how many people lived in this supposed colony? Upwards of 50,000 people could have lived in the caverns comfortably. Unbelievable. One theory, one theory is that the present Indian tribes found in Arizona are descendants of the serfs or slaves of the people which inhabited the cave. Undoubtedly, a good many thousands of years before the Christian era, people lived here, which re reached a high stage of civilization. The chronology of human history is full of gaps. Professor Jordan is much enthused over the discoveries and, be and believes that the, the find will prove of incalculable value in archaeological work. One thing I have not spoken of may be of interest. There is one chamber of the passageway to which is not ventilated, and when we approach it, a deadly, snaky smell struck us. Our light would not penetrate the gloom, and until stronger ones are available, we will not know what the chamber contains. Well, okay, hold on. <clears throat> so you're saying somebody... <laughs> came up to this tomb or whatever it was and this was is like this room with no ventilation like, smells like snakes 
a deadly <laughs> snaky smell. <laughs> Smells like snakes. Let's yeah, not what go snakes there? smell like. I don't know. But the next sentence is some say snakes, but other boo hoo this idea and think it may contain a deadly gas or chemical used by the ancients. But then they smell it. They can they can I think they can just smell it on the other side of the door on the other side of the path. Yeah, that sounds it's like, like if it's deadly, through. you're probably dropping right there still. Yeah, that's true. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe they got <laughs> sick and they died maybe a year later or something. You know, that would like explain the why there's work. no record of them. Probably. <laughs> Damn right. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> no sounds are heard, but it smells snaky just the same. That is the, whole the wildest <laughs> quote in this whole fucking article. article. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole underground installation gives one of shaky nerves the creeps. The gloom is like a weight on one's shoulders and our flashlights and candles only make the darkness blacker. Imagination can revel in conjectures and ungodly daydreams back through the ages that have elapsed till the mind reels dizzily in, in space. The, this is the, we're at now the last bit, Jesse, of the, uh, of the newspaper article. Don't worry. In connection with this story, it is notable that among the Hopi Indians, the tradition is told that their ancestors once lived in an underworld in the Grand Canyon till dissension arose between the good and the bad, the people of one heart and the people of two hearts. Machetto, who was their chief, counseled them to leave the underworld, but there was no way out. The chief then caused a tree to grow up and pierce the roof of the underworld, and then the people of one heart climbed out. They tarried by, I'm going to butcher this name, Pasisavai, Red River, uh, which is the Colorado, and grew grain and corn. They sent out a message to the Temple of the Sun asking the blessing of peace, goodwill, and rain for, the, for people of one heart. The messenger never returned, but today at the Hopi villages at sundown can be seen the old men of the tribe out on the housetops gazing toward the sun, looking for the messenger. When he returns, their lands and ancient dwelling place will be restored to them. That is the tradition. Among the engravings of animals in the cave is seen the image of a heart over the spot where it is located. The legend was learned by W.E. Rollins, the artist, during a year spent with the Hopi Indians. There are two theories of the origin of the Egyptians. One is that they came from Asia. Another, that the, that the racial cradle was in the upper Nile region. Hiren, an, Egy an Egyptologist, believed in the Indian origin of the Egyptians. The discoveries of the Grand Canyon may throw further light on human evolution in prehistoric ages. And that is the entirety of the article that uh, was in the Arizona Gazette regarding this entire, this entire supposed civilization. It does. I mean, uh, look, it does explain if there's both Asian iconography <clears throat> and Egyptian icon iconography, it does explain why, like, you know, it, it justifies the Pacific Ocean route, right? Because maybe right. the Egyptians were like, you know what? We're running low on dudes. Let's go to Asia and pick up some dudes. Take them with us to uh, <laughs> the, the new world, the new land where our priest told me to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Have I convinced you, Jesse, that this is real yet? No. Um, is there okay, cool. anything? Is there anything <laughs> that points to this being real? Is there a a a, a cave? Is there anything? There's nothing that so there right. is a cave. It is called Isis's Temple, the Isis Temple out in uh, the Grand Canyon. That is an actual cave, uh, supposedly where it was found. Supposedly, but there's but we, nothing there. Just heads up. There's nothing there. <laughs> We're no. just heads so, up. That's not. It's just a cave. Drop a heads up. <laughs> it's just a um, cave. Let me. Let me <laughs> There's not like a hidden part of the cave. It's just a Have cave. Have you been there, man? I, I <laughs> can I tell it? you, my dad, one of his dreams is to go to like see those caves. He wants to do that really? kind of stuff. And I have to be like, he, he might be very surprised. Cool. There's not going to be anything there. There's nothing now, there. The government supposedly has a single soldier guarding the entrance to this cave. That's with, not um, true. That uh, I think is a single. M16. They would put a sing one a guy with an M sixteen <laughs> chilling in the Grand yeah. Canyon at all times. <laughs> yeah. No Correct. way. One man. Well, they uh, they rotate, but the government keeps one guard on the outside. Like to keep the tomb of the away. unknown soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One yeah. guard. Correct. Very what is one guard going to do? One. A single. What a is single one guard? Guard. Guard three the guys go after that place. guard. What's he well, going to need more now? We're blowing open the story. This is the everybody. dumbest they thing I've ever heard. You got to look through like dead kayakers. Littering um, the area so, near the cave entrance. So Jesse did some Googling um, uh, while One we were doing that. One Google search. Well, first off, first <laughs> off, first off, let's talk about this article and the descriptions <laughs> that this researcher gave. Because, again, this is what year, 1909? 1909. So this guy, the way he describes things is not the way 
researchers talk. This book from 1900, I'm just looking at it right now. The way he described, like this guy's talking about walls and stuff. This guy's like, it's it's solid side walls are relieved on the exterior by uh, pilasters. The cella was ev- uh, elevated upon a high podium, the upper moldings of which may be seen at the rear and along the sides, but most of it is concealed with debris or soil. The ornamental details, that's how archaeological people write. This guy's like, this man, well, this man is a white man from Idaho. He just is explaining Man, did dude, you, he's a white man from from uh, somewhere. It just doesn't. The difference is, did he, is negligible. Does the, does the does the book that you have mention anything about snaky? No. Snaky smells. Nothing snaky. <laughs> Zero snaky. Uh, or what that uh, might let's mean. Let's get to the point. Let's get to the point Zero here. Zero snaky. Okay. On the no literal snaky. Smithsonian website. <laughs> the literal <laughs> Smithsonian website. <laughs> And this is why the world's messed up, because I know I'm going to say this and Math is going to be like, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Damn the, right. You're going to say exactly what the Smithsonian the liter- wants the public says, to believe. Myth. The Smithsonian discovered Egyptian ruins in the Grand Canyon. Fact. It didn't. Backstory. On April 5th, 1909, the Arizona Gazette ran the following headline. Explorations in Grand Canyon. Mysteries of immense rich cavern being brought to light. Jordan is enthused. Remarkable find indicates ancient people migrated from Orient. The article includes the testimony of one G.E. Kincaid, who says that he may or may not exist, says that he traveling (laughs) solo down the green and Colorado rivers discovered proof of an ancient civilization, possibly of Egyptian origin. The story also asserts that a Smithsonian uh, archaeologist named S.A. Jordan returned with Kincaid to investigate the site. However, the Arizona Gazette is the only newspaper that ran this story and no records can confirm the existence of either Kincaid or Jordan. There's a reason for that. Did the one guy guarding it kill them? <laughs> that, that what happened? He had an M16 because in 1909. How did that happen? Yeah. Did you even think about that part? Uh, you're right. You're right. My bad. Uh, no, it's because GE and Kincaid went in there with the intent of, of gold, of like uh, looking for gold initially, and that was illegal in the Grand Canyon. Oh my at the time. God. So he came up with a fake Roosevelt, name. Roosevelt, right? Yes, because of Roosevelt. So oh he came up with a fake God. name to go and explore, and that's why there's no record Damn, of him anywhere. Check because made atheist. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I, I mean, I, I know that no matter what I say, you will have an answer, and it'll be just as dumb. But I'm letting you because know because the truth is out there. The, Jesse, truth, the truth is, is out there. Bro. This out of if this is what you led with, if you went to like Mulder and were like Mulder Scully, the truth is out there. There's a secret Egyptian base. In the Grand Canyon, I would be like, "All right, hang it up, Scully. It's time to it's time to hang it up. We were wrong. We were Listen, so man, wrong." I just want I just want our listeners to question everything, right? Nothing is uh, nothing is truth Don't. except for your reality, right? So what? whatever you perceive as truth, no, is truth we all now. have to agree on truths. We all have to agree on what's real because then society breaks down, and then who knows? what I know I'm not living this with you. I, 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 see your, I see your smile. They don't see your smile. They don't see your <laughs> bullshit smile. They don't see that. That is going to be articles like. Jesse, I just want to send you this uh, article about how, uh, you know, people travel all over the world all the time. I'm going to get all these damn things about like, oh, uh, do you know that people from Africa were in South America? I'm going to get that stuff. and I'm going to be like, that's not the point of the story you're telling. The story you're telling is nonsense. A dude made it up. He made it up. Or the true history of the United States will forever be hidden and a single Why soldier will guard it for it all it matter eternity. if they hit it? I'm from LA. You know, anything is possible. You know, <laughs> lizard people. <Yeah. laughs> Dude, that'd be a cool movie though. It's <laughs> like, they that would be a good Nick Cage, like third, uh, third, they go down there and there's right. a guard and he's like, we got to get past this guard. We got to see what's inside. <laughs> His M16 uses cat's eye bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it's a worthless like, metal, but they are homing bullets when they're put inside an M16, <laughs> the holy weapon. <laughs> when the M16 gets blessed, they become Luckily, holy. I've cat. been working on an M17. No, that would be his sidekick. He'd be like, "Luckily, yeah, I've been working on M17." And he's like, oh. "The guy from uh, Alias." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's all I brought for today. So that was all right. Let me bring up you. my thing. So I got some stuff from back. That went in the way day. longer than I expected it to. So yeah, I'm no, me so, too. Uh, back like ten years ago. All right, I don't even know if you guys have talked about this because I'm not gonna lie, I haven't listened to like anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> a true I, fan hanging out. At least fan. freaking Dodger listen to a few episodes. <laughs> oh, first. Yeah, I'm not. I just go in winging it. Uh, so 
I don't know. Have you guys talked? Because you're like called Chiluminati. Have you talked about the Illuminati? Not yet. No, really? like obviously in broad strokes on episodes where they're relevant, yeah, but never like, like I did, a full episode on the I Illuminati. Did, uh, An Illuminati, I feel like, will be a multi-part deep dive when we get to yeah, it. Yeah, I mm. did uh, Bohemian Grove recently, which is like very similar to the Illuminati. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. Cause like years ago, like I'm talking like 10, 11 years ago, I got really into like that 10 years ago, you were offered a membership to the Illuminati <laughs> <laughs> and I turned it down and said, I will not. No, it was, uh, <laughs> I got really into the Illuminati conspiracy theory. So I like really looked into it and I was just curious about your opinions on it. Cause to me, I don't think it's like crazy. Like I think it can be crazy. Like they're like, they're doing crazy shit. But to me, it's like, a bunch of powerful people getting together to have more power. That's yeah, that I fully believe if it exists that it's like people with immense amount, the real people with real wealth, the billionaires names who you don't know who hide in the backgrounds who are just rich and influence politics via money. That would be who comes together in a meeting of an That's Illuminati. That's the thing we yeah. already know, right? We already know rich people hang out together from all over the world in like private things we mm-hmm. they got already, like the secret societies and shit yeah like we, the skull and bones and freemasons and everything yeah we know those yeah. things are real right we know that like backdoor deals are made all the time you know we have evidence of specific ones even uh, the one that we were talking about bohemian grove right they have they can directly trace the development of the atomic bomb to the Bohemian Grove, like the scientists and the people that needed to pay for it met there and like figured it out. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. so maybe like, I mean, I don't know exactly what the, like the, you know, the unifying theory of Illuminati is, but like the idea that above that Bohemian Grove where the presidents go and world leaders from all over the world go that maybe even higher than that, there's like an even richer one that makes even bigger decisions. Not that Mm. crazy. That's what I was thinking. That's uh, I was like, yeah, I don't think it's that crazy. What does Jesse think? Do you think it's crazy? I I don't have any opinion. I'm trying to get in. You want to the Illuminati? (laughs) Yeah, I want to be Illuminati. We could turn the Illuminati into Illuminati propaganda for the right. I yeah. I mean, look, I already said I believe in aliens for ten thousand dollars. So like, (laughs) sign me up. I'm I'm speaking of money. Did you ever see the like thing where you fold the bills and they look like the towers burning or whatever? The twin (laughs) towers. I have seen that. Yeah, Yeah. that shit's crazy. I was like, they made this up. But then I looked and I did it. I was like, oh my god, it's it's it is. It is all right. It's it's real. All right, so. Besides that nonsense, what are you trying to tell us about the Illuminati? No, no, no. We're not getting off track. What were you going to say about the Illuminati? (laughs) That's what I was saying. It's real. Yeah. It's got to have like some sort of realism behind it. Oh, you 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 ask us if we think it's real. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, like, I I think we, I don't know. We know the Illuminati by another name. That's what I think. I I think, I think that it, it could be. Uh, the Bohemian Grove is a good is a good example of the of, of a possible group that's the Illuminati. Uh, you know, some people say the Masons have some connection to the Illuminati, yep. right? Mm. Uh, even like Scientology operates on a very scary level uh, at a lot yep. of uh, you know in a lot of ways. You know, a lot of rich people involved and lots of money going around that is in. Inex- it all goes back to money. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, I think that's. I think that's. I think the Illuminati is not so much a conspiracy theory as it is like a scary way of looking at something that's true yeah Yeah. i agree i think there's definitely something out there that if not call the illuminati operates similarly to how we would imagine illuminati operating i mean even why don't they call me look at all the like what what are you gonna do (laughs) jesse what what is your pitch to the illuminati how what is your what is your sales pitch to induct you into the illuminati i won't say nothing you want to be like the little (laughs) finger of the illuminati you want to be like no i don't want to like i don't want to get like i don't want to be involved in your weird murders or like any of that shit, like, but call me for an orgy. Let you me know if you're going to have like a get together like, where you're all like, yeah. okay, yeah. hanging out Jesse, and you're all just like, just join the plotting. fucking aliens, dude. Just call no, them. Just join no, the aliens. No, no, that's what no. they do. I have do. to believe it's in like, something there. Those aliens I'm, look like Prince. Come on. That's hot <laughs> as hell. No, <laughs> no. All, all I'm saying is I'd be fine being part of the, I wouldn't say nothing. I would, you know, do whatever they told me. If it meant I had to kill Krendor, you know, it's a thing I have to do for the Illuminati, <laughs> right? I, I, Illuminati. I, I'll yeah. fight him back. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Illuminati. Whoever <laughs> lives gets the host seat. Yeah, if we join together. <laughs> Illuminati, the two of us join together. Think about what we Ooh. can accomplish. What if one of us already is, is in the Illuminati? 
I know oh, that's shit. not true. You guys, you'd be too cool to hang out with us. You'd be like, I got too much to do. I got, <laughs> that seems really similar to my actual schedule, though. Like, I'm very hard to pin, pin down. <laughs> I don't. I don't think Illuminati. Illuminati. I don't think Illuminati. Illuminati does. Illuminati. I don't think they allow for walks on the beach to take Pokemon snap photos. I, look, here's the thing. That's chill as hell. But okay, <laughs> that's why Illuminati would allow. It, but not that's Illuminati. what I'm saying. We should start a actual Illuminati. We should get backing from some sort of wealthy fa- financier. We should have houses all over the world where chill ass people can come and do chill ass things. <laughs> and we run the world in a way where we just, we just turn the temperature down a little bit. You know can what I, I mean? Ask a question. I, just, I'm going to put this out there. Does anyone want to buy our brand for their pot shop for their smoke shop? You mean like oh you want to license the Chiluminati as like a, as like a brand. Weed. Think about it in every state in America. <laughs> I do a oh, lot of, I do a lot of work for like venture capitalists, funding weed companies at freelance already. I, it, I could probably <laughs> let make this know. happen. Let, what if I, that was the case? And you were like, welcome to Illuminati, right? Think about it. And it'd be like a chill, be you know, sick. it'd be like a chill coffee shop. It wouldn't Dude, it'd it'd be like a chill vibe. That, fi- that guy who was a financier who offered to run our own convention that we met that one time, Alex, at the restaurant. Oh my the God, mall. dude. How, do, <laughs> d- have I told that story before? No, not on the show. Dude, I wish <laughs> I could remember who it was. I have it written in my phone somewhere. This guy approached me in a mall and I told him that I was like, <laughs> see, Kincaid was his name. <laughs> dude, it was like something, he was like, I'm a, I'm a race, I'm like a, I'm like a, I own like this big company and I'm like, I own like several racing teams and I'm doing like an esports thing and I want to get you guys involved at, at the highest level. Give me a call. Let's see what's up. And I looked him up and he had like a book that he'd written and like not <laughs> yep. much else, but like there was a picture of him in a race car and he, he was there with like his kid and like his kid's friend. Like it was crazy. Like it was a wild interaction that we had. You it know how it is. Not- people just crazy. People come talk to me all the time. I don't know what, I don't know <laughs> what it is. I don't know why I'm that guy. I'm coming in a P.F. Chang's. We That's had right. lunch. It was, was the, at a P.F. Chang's in Indianapolis. Like what? <laughs> yes. This man in the mall pulled us over and he's like, all right, what are you guys talking about for like for? 30 minutes? It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Pitching, his basically pitching how he was going to do his own convention and getting Alex involved in like the ground level. I was like, I'll like you would attract like, crazy people though. Do I? I think so. Yeah. I just have the vibe. I guess you have I the vibe. I guess I kind of do. You don't look crazy, but you just got the vibe of like you you could listen to crazy people. And I think it's true because you seem to enjoy listening. I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, <laughs> it's also the problem is it also makes like drunk people come talk to me at bars, which is like not tight. Like or like all of a sudden I'll look to my yeah. right and like a drunk guy will be sitting at my table in a restaurant, which I you know, I'm not that into. But, uh, you know, that's if you got lots well, of money and big ideas. I'm your guy. Come talk to me. I'll make yeah. your dreams come true. Go talk to Alex. My thing is, Bring I just don't me. trust anyone. So I never talk to anybody. Like, I remember at the mall one time, it was like Christmas time. There's this tall guy and a short guy. And he was like, he like looked at me. He's like, are you spiritual? And I was like, oh, no, God. thanks. Just kept walking. <laughs> I was like, instantaneous. I'm like, this guy's trying to like abduct someone. No doubt. I bought, I bought weed off of a homeless guy on a bridge in Portland in the rain. And it had lint in it. What the shit? It had lint in it. Yeah. <laughs> You told us this story at like a, a dinner at one yeah. point. I think and you smoked it. I smoked you it. Wouldn't get, <laughs> you wouldn't get kept, lint. I kept it for like months because I didn't want to smoke it, and then I finally smoked it, and it was terrible. <laughs> you wouldn't get you wouldn't get lint if you went to a Chiluminati. Chiluminati brand. That's true. Do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Illuminati branded stores, weed, whatever you can do. Yeah, I'm putting out the call. Out. Look, I'm very literate in this world. If you guys need, if you want, if, I, I know how to do this. I can I can make this happen. Well, I, uh, that's it for us here on this episode. We got to go to a chill mini. Uh, and before I get emails, thanks for listening, everybody. Actually. We'll see y'all later. Bye. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't nope, think nope, that, it's that, over. That, it's over. Bye. <laughs> bye. His headphones are off. He's gone. That's fine. He's I'm gone. still recording. Listen, I don't actually think they're Egyptian colony. Don't send me emails. I got into, I don't need angry emails. Send them to that's me. It. Send all. them to me. Faciani a at gmail.com. Please, 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 please. Uh, I want to <laughs> hear, I want to hear from you. Please let me know. Man I'm ready to believe emails. you. <laughs> I mean, I'm right. If you got evidence, I'm down. You got pictures of something like I'm into it. If you say you visited it, tell me your story. Yeah. Oh, God, don't, don't be say mad that. Someone's going to like send you a picture of like their house. And they're like, this is in the grain. Game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> picture of my own house. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Oh, God. That'd be the worst. Jesus. <laughs> uh, 
Like, uh, all right, we got to go. We got to go knock out to Illuminati. Thank you so much, Crandor, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the story. Yeah, I had a good time. Anytime I can just hear some crazy shit. Sounds good to me. You would love. I think you should awesome. come on the show again. I, I'll, I'll, I I'll put yeah, an episode together for you. Uh, is there anything yeah, you want to yeah. pimp out to people? The, you know, the type of people that listen yeah, to please. our show. You think maybe some of uh, I mean, if anything, just listen to uh, Cox and Crendor. There you go. Yeah, you listen to Jesse all the time. Listen to our show. If you, we don't talk about conspiracies, but we just ramble about dumb shit. There you go. Yeah, but you guys go through like Florida, man, anyway. Florida, man, Florida man articles and stuff. It's yeah. a wild time over at Cox and Crendor. So go check that out. It's it's a great show. Yeah, it's, it's been going on for like you said, eight years. This, it's this we're almost episode three hundred. It's just, it's a parody of a morning show. So we just ramble a bit, and then we do like traffic, weather, sports, and then our big news story. So it's, we just kind of make fun of it. But now it's just what we do. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, man. I'd love to have you on again too. Uh, we can always plenty of like insane shit to cover. Um, but if you guys want more Crendor, don't worry. He'll be in the chill mini as well. So we'll be over there. Yeah. Thanks so much oh, yeah, for I'll listening. Plug it, I'll plug it. YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. All one word. There you go. Patreon.com slash Chiluminati pod. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Look it up. See what's good. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Whoop. Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.